Think of a boy, the boy born in a land governed by the invaders who have ruled over them for a century. He is staying away from his father, who is at war with the invader, striving hard to establish an identity, not just for himself, but for the people he represents, people of his land. As a kid, he is sent to administer three districts on the behalf of his father with a group of administrators. His mother as his regent, instilling in him all the great qualities as a mother would. The mother, having had the fair share of mishappenings in her family due to the tyrannical rule of the invaders that they live in. And what happens in a few decades? A leader is born. The boy goes on to establish a fair and just rule from the three districts that his father gave to 360 forts forming a kingdom from the Tapi river in the north to the Kaveri in the south a rule of the people by the people and for the people who was he chhatrapati shivaji maharaj a hero of india and how did he manage to achieve what he did timeless management techniques on this birth anniversary of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj let us explore a quality that made him so successful leading from the front eminent historian ninad bedekar did an exercise to list the great qualities that today's management enthusiast can study from history here is a first that we explore today the prime quality that made people believe in chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was his leadership he always led from the front a true leader a true leader never expects anything from his team unless he himself can demonstrate and show the way himself the most powerful leadership tool you have is your own personal example and that is what we see in the daring example today 10th november 1659 about 2 pm in the afternoon a meticulously designed plan was set in motion firstly the enemy afzal khan who had almost certainly pledged to finish off chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was lured into a place which was geographically suitable for the maratha army to fight a battle away from the open fields where cavalry would have been effective in the mountains of sahyadri where his infantry was at its best and what was the lure the king himself shivaji maharaj did not hesitate to promise himself as the bait to afzal khan he could have managed to deal this episode via his ambassadors but no He knew that if he had to execute his ambitious plan of slaying the enemy and following it up with a three-pronged attack on the enemy territory, he will have to lead from the front. And so he did. He could have used a body double, something that he did just a year later during the siege of Panala, but he did not. He insisted that he had to meet the person who was responsible for his elder brother's death. He had to set an example. 18 years later when he would start for the southern conquest the qutub shah would very well remember of this event and stay hesitant to meet shivaji maharaj to instill such anxiety in the enemy's mind it's only possible when you lead from the front he methodically prepared for the meeting the meeting was decided with clauses 10 bodyguards were to accompany with him as well as afzal khan afzal khan had a history of betrayal hence it was essential to dress wisely for the meeting He wore a chainmail armor under his clothes and ensured that he even covered his head with a helmet under his headgear. What does this teach us today? It tells us that you lead from the front, you expect for peace, you head into a meeting with your contestant representing your company, but you don't go trusting just your instincts. You prepare well for it. You do your homework. Next, he had a plan which was to be executed no matter what happened in that meeting. He was the most critical piece of the plan to ensure its success but nevertheless the outcome of the battle was not going to be decided on what happened in that meeting things were already set in motion and just at a signal he ensured that they were to be followed and so they did when afzal khan tried to squeeze shivaji maharaj in a bear hug and tried to stab his back using a dagger shivaji maharaj who was skilled in the art of wrestling rescued himself of the hug 
and tore open the torso of Afzal Khan using tiger claws dagger and eventually slaying him with a small sword. In the process, he was attacked by the injured Khan. But his headgear saved him, leaving mark on his forehead. His armor had saved him from the dagger. All his planning that went into this had paid off. His courageous decision to himself face a man who was known to have been larger than his size was not just an act of a hero who dares it all, but an act of a true leader who was at the control of his plan. In the following days, he himself led the army. One of the three-pronged attack, along with his trusted lieutenants, Netoji and Doroji, and raided the enemy territory, capturing important strategic strongholds from the Adil Shahi Empire. Doroji leading the troops into Konkan, Netoji marching towards Bijapur, while Shivaji Maharaj himself led the charge up to the fort of Panhala, capturing it on the 28th of November 1659. Thus, within 18 days of slaying Afzal Khan, Shivaji Maharaj leading his troops at the front established Maratha dominion over the much desired lands of southern Deccan. All these modern management and leadership gurus stress on the fact that when you, as a leader, showcase the skills that you desire from your company, it increases the competency of your workers. They always become more energized and engaged. On this birth anniversary of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj the Great, what better example than this daring meeting that changed the fortunes of Maratha history? Because it is your hardest times that often lead you to the greatest moments in your life. Keep going. Tough situations build strong people. Stay tuned for more such lessons from history and do subscribe to Historiography. Thank you.